So what got you first into music? Um, my dad played in the band for a long time. He was raised in Chicago, and uh, he played in the metal hair band for a long time, and um, kind of took after that, not the metal hair band part, but um, just kind of was grew up in a house of music, and he played a lot, and uh, my grandparents bought me guitar lessons, and so I just kind of took after it and found out that I had a passion for it, so it went from there. When did you start writing music? Writing music, man. I think the first time I ever wrote a complete song was probably freshman year of high school, but there was little bits and pieces, but I usually, it was thrown away by the time the song was finished because I thought it sucked. So uh, the first complete song I wrote was freshman year of high school, I think. Who are some of your new school influences? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, Dave Matthews is a big part. I know that's a, a fucking bandwagon, but um, can I cuss? Is it yeah. alright? Okay, yeah. I just say, uh, um, um, but um, the big, another big one, uh, Ben Howard. I really like the Mumford and Sons. I mean, I like all the big names, but there's a lot of smaller names that I like. Um, who's a good one? I really like, I mean, Margaret and Nico Stone, so I really like them. Air Magnet, Magnetic Zeros, before they kind of got big, I really like them. I know that sounds fucking hipster, but, <laughs> and I hate that, but, um, um, I don't know, did any, anybody that plays, like, any folk, or, like, really, you know, just, like, light, mellow stuff, I'm a pretty chill guy, so I tend to take from everything like that, the head and the heart, luminaries, all that type of stuff. Do you remember how you got into the local scene? Um, I started playing with a band, the first band I ever formed was called Hamilton Sky. That's a lot. The first band I ever called, uh, they got together, was The Squares. Um, and we played a couple of shows here and there, just trying to get the feel for it. And then um, we went our separate ways, got a band called Ham Sky. And we actually played our first show here for the Battle of the Bands at the Hoosier Dome. And that's kind of how I started to get it. And just little by little, you know, you play a show at the Irving, so you get the feel for the Irving. You play a show up in North at like, you know, Studio 37. They're pretty new, but and just different stuff like that, just playing all around. And, you know, as I've gotten older, I started to play bars and whatnot and stuff, stuff like that, but um, little by little, just picking at each place, seeing what I like. What's been the favorite show that you've done? Favorite show I've done? I would have to say it's probably, um, we played a show at the Irving with my previous band called Helm, and uh, there's a, there a lot of people there, and it was, it was like, it was the last show that we played, like big show before people went out to college and whatnot, so it was pretty like, emotional, and uh, because we were pretty close to the band. I mean, we, we all been friends from high school, and um, it was just a it was just a really cool show. The lighting was really cool. We played really well, so it was just it was a fun, it was a fun show. How old were you when you started your playing your first instrument? Hmm. Um. I started playing guitar when I was in sixth grade, so I must have been what is that? Eighteen now. So. I think it was right around like 11 or 12, right around there, maybe 13. If I'm doing the math right, I can't think that much, but yeah, it was right around there. Do you work with any um, bands in the local scene? Um, I work at a recording studio called The Pop Machine, so um, I do a lot of, I meet a lot of bands from the local scene. Um, I'm kind of still getting up my local base of like working with people, engineering for them. Um, but. Um, yeah, and, and just playing shows and stuff like that, you know, you meet people and then you find out which bands are your friends and which are, and then all of a sudden you've got like this list of bands that you play shows with, which is really, well that's, that's the coolest part about the local scene, I think, is that like, uh, all of a sudden, um, you have like, after a while you have this group of people that you can always like, count on for them to ask you to play shows, and you ask them to play shows, so um, it's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, so I, I have a lot of people that I, I, I tend to uh, lean towards playing shows and stuff like that. What is 2014 like? 2014, um, I'm going to release my debut EP, I Don't Need the Money, um, releasing it for free. Um, so it'll be online for anybody to download. Um, I don't really believe that your first piece of work should be you know, for revenue. I think it should be for people to get a feel for what you are and what you're 
type of uh, genre is and how they can describe you and all that stuff and having someone pay for it they never heard you They're very unlikely I, I'm a pretty business type of guy I also think of you know as music as much as a business as business as it is like a passion and a fun thing to do but um and I don't think that you know people are likely to buy your stuff if it's your first thing unless they know you or they're recommended by a friend so I think giving away just gives it to a much bigger fan base or, or soon to be fan base so I think it's just smart and better so I'll do that and just playing a lot of shows, trying to get out, um, trying to get the name out there. Hopefully, you know, meet up with some people um, and start to play with people. But, you know, if I keep playing by myself and it keeps going well, you know, then I'll do that. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been getting? Yeah, I mean, all I don't love them. Man, that's a tough one. <sighs> the best piece of advice I've ever been given, at least uh, for music, is that it's a job like anything else. And I think that with a lot of upcoming musicians and starting out musicians, that's something they if they hear earlier, it's even better. And because it, 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 there's this nostalgia that goes with music and like trying to pursue a career. It's like, oh, it, it won't be like a real job. You'll, you'll play music all over the world, you know, if you become famous and like that. And it'll be a great life. But in reality, like, you are waking up, practicing going over what you need to do, you know, working with different people. It doesn't matter, it's a, it's a job and I'm like, so it's, I think for me, and I have a very workhorse mentality, like I gotta get up every day and do what I need to do. So I think that by having that, I've kind of looked at it a lot differently and been able to map out what I want to do with music rather than like, oh, if it happens, it happens. You know, it, it makes you more realistic about it, which can be good, you know, you gotta, you gotta have the dream and the passion and the drive, but you still gotta say, all right, I'm gonna do this, this, and this. That's how I, I've always been. So I think that was the best piece of advice I've ever gotten. What, if you could say anything to your fans, what would it be? Uh, that I love them, first off, you know. Um, yeah. People come out to shows and listen to local music. Some people don't necessarily want to be there. Some people drive by their girlfriends and their boyfriends. But um, I think that uh, just the people that go out and support the scene are great. What, what makes the world go round in Indianapolis. Um, uh, two, don't give up on me. I'm coming out with more stuff, always. Uh, and um, I think that's all I would say. Hi, I'm Maxwell Joseph, and you are watching Live Maze TV.